Hello, I'm Jason Cargo with Clock Spring Company. Today we're going to be demonstrating the spool feeder method. Uh, the spool feeder method is very um, helpful on large diameter pipes or applications where you don't have enough clearance to actually coil past the clock spring uh, underneath the coil. Um, a few extra steps and a few extra tools are needed when doing the spool feeder. One is the spool feeder itself. Uh, this is an extra item that you will have to order as well as uh, four inch vice grips and the mylar strip. Uh, what you're going to do, the first step you're going to do for your spool feeder is attach it with the ratchet straps to the pipe. The next step is going to be to place your coil onto the, the spool feeder itself. From there you will unwind your coil. As you can see that mylar strip is where we're going to be placing the clock frame itself with our repair area being over to the side. So to create the gap to be able to slide that clock spring over once it's on the pipe. Unspool this and use your 4 inch vice grips to create that gap. When you put your 4 inch vice grips on, make sure you put them on the leading edge of the clock spring on the inside layer so you can know where to line that up with your starter pipe. Alright, as you can see we've created a gap so we're going to be able to slide the clock spring down to the actual repair area from the preparation area. Um, with our 4 inch vice grips. Um, the first step you'll have to do when applying the adhesive to the coil itself is where we applied the vice grips. Obviously you're not going to be able to get your roller brush down there. So what we'll do is we will load up our paintbrush with our adhesive and put a generous amount of adhesive in the seam where you created that gap. This will allow you to use the paintbrush roller for the rest of the coil yet get adhesive all the way down to the starting edge of the clock spring. Now that we've used the paintbrush to actually get down to the seam where we created the gap, um, now you'll just paint on your adhesive just like you would on a regular clock spring installation. To help out uh, the person on the other side of the pipe, if you hold this back so it's not flopping around as you apply your adhesive, basically you'll apply the coat of adhesive just like you would on a regular clock spring installation and uncork it throughout the pipe. So you can see we've got our mylar slip underneath the clock spring itself to not come to any contamination or soft materials that might be existing. Um, if this section of the pipe where we're not repairing the pipe has actually not been um, sandblasted or repaired. Now we will continue this process until we get to our second black line, just like a regular clock spring installation. So we've gotten to our first black line, which is telling us the end of the coil is approaching. Stop applying adhesive at the second black line. Our next step, just like on a regular clock spring installation, is we are applying the filler material at the leading edge of the starter pad. One thing while doing a spool feeder you have to watch is the direction your coil is going. And the reason we put the 4 inch vice grips at the edge of the clock spring is so we can see where we're going to have to line that up with the starter pad itself. We've now put our filler material onto the leading edge of the starter pad. And our next step will be to prepare the repair area. Always remember to watch your uh, lip of your starter pad, the backing of your starter pad, to make sure that you don't get adhesive on the starter pad itself, and always painting in a downward position. 
I'll paint from the 12 o'clock to the 6 o'clock position on my side and pass it over. Lee will paint from the 12 o'clock to the 6 o'clock position on her side. Now that we've repair, uh, prepared the repair area, we'll pull off the backing of our starter pad. And we will slide our clock spring into position using the vice grips as a guide to where our leading edge is. Once the clock spring is centered over the repair area, we'll apply pressure where the starter pad is. And one by one, take the vice grips off. Checking to make sure you've got good adequate coverage on your starter pad and that your starter pad is doing its job. One extra step you'll have to do while spool feeding is if you saw the spool feeder, because we created that gap, it doesn't come all the way to the edge of the black line. So when you pull up this lip, you'll see where the clock spring actually scraped off all that excess adhesive as you were hand tightening that up. So I'll hold up that upper lip while Leo reapplies adhesive up to the second black line. Now since the clock spring is hand tight, we'll go ahead and square up the edges. And we will apply our Velcro strap and cinch bar. Now we've applied our Velcro strap uh, for our cinch bar. Let's go ahead and make sure your teeth are locked in when you'll tighten down the coil. Just like on a regular clock string installation, you'll look for the extrusion of excess adhesive and filler material. And while I'm tightening that down, we'll go ahead and square it up one more time. As we're holding that pressure onto the clock spring, we'll wrap three, three wraps. You line tape from the kit around each side of the coil. The U line tape will hold the coil in place while the adhesive shears out. Tapes in place, we can take the pressure off the cinch strap. From there, we will pull all the excess adhesive and filling material off and seal the edges of the deposit. 